Hey, what's up guys? Coach Bobby here. Welcome back to my 45 till 45 video series chronicling uh, 45 days of tidbits, information, and just my daily schedule uh, 45 days out until my 45th birthday. Today's Tuesday, October 24th, so I'm one day out, guys. One more day to my 45th, so I have some catching up to do. So I'm filming a few videos today, trying to get caught up at the very least on my daily schedule. So I'm going to get right to it, all right? So my Wednesday, my I'm sorry, my Thursday eating schedule. So I've gone over Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So Thursdays, guys, are a burn day for me. So I break down my schedule, again, into build and burn days. On build days, I'm trying to... Uh, create an environment where my where my my muscles can be broken down, uh, muscle tissue wise, and and give my body the necessary building blocks and nutrition to rebuild those muscles, uh, leaner and stronger. Right. So I talked about how our best asset, our biggest asset, toward weight management, toward body composition change, is having lean muscle tissue. So uh, we cannot. Um, have bad workouts. We have to make sure that we have uh, sufficient energy, sufficient um, fuel, sufficient um, environment for our body to respond the way it should and needs to in order to build lean muscle tissue. So uh, we have to schedule out our workouts and make that a priority. So for me, again, my workout days are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and one day of the weekend, Saturday or Sunday. Uh, usually a Saturday. So when I know that, I can schedule my burn days around my build days, right? And schedule uh, my carbohydrate intake and my car carbohydrate fasting periods around when I train. That's very important, guys. So we know like when our body is, is best, most likely to use carbohydrates in a positive manner and, and least likely to store it as fat. So knowing that is, is critical. So Thursdays, again, are a burn day. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday uh, are build days, um, sort of. Monday, Wednesday, Friday for sure. Saturday and Sunday I'll get into later. Uh, but Monday, Wednesday, Friday are build days. Tuesday and Thursdays are burn days where you're trying to put your body in the best position possible to burn fat. So. So Tuesday was a burn day, Thursday, today is a burn day. Now for most people, Thursday is going to be the best opportunity to burn fat, right? Especially as you begin this, this movement toward a lower carb, less eating, smaller eating window uh, lifestyle, right? Or strategy, because most of us will still be uh, habitually tied to large amounts of intake over the weekend and not yet able to sufficiently burn through glucose and glycogen um, in the workouts. So on Mondays, as I've said before, we're trying to put our, our body back on schedule, if you will, trying to burn through glycogen and glucose to put our, our body in position to burn fat on the first burn day, which is Tuesday. However, again, many of us have too high a level uh, or a average level of glycogen and glucose to readily and regularly uh, get rid of it, right? We, we, we have, have been accustomed for many, many, many years of a high carbohydrate intake diet. So because of that, we live perpetually at this high level of glucose and glycogen storage in our bodies. So we have to, over time, get those levels, the average levels of glycogen and glucose down to a, a level uh, where we can readily uh, and regularly deplete it, right? We couple that with the ability and the understanding of how to train correctly in order to get rid of the glycogen. And those two factors take time, right? So in the very beginning, it's going to be difficult for many people to get rid of glycogen and glucose on a Monday. So Tuesday, which is a rest day, which eventually will be a burn day, will be just a lower carbohydrate consumption day. And it won't be necessarily an a, um, environment where your body's burning fat yet. So in the beginning, and then you go back on Wednesday and you do another training session, I do at least, to get rid of the glycogen. And then hopefully 
on Thursday, you've got that that level, those levels down to a level where you can get rid of all your glycogen and then be in fat burning mode on Thursday. So if we do all those things right, right, at the very least, Thursday should be a, a, a fat burning day, right? We come out of the weekend with high levels of glucose, right? We train uh, hard on, on Monday. We use that day, if we have to, to satiate and, and fulfill any of our cravings for carbohydrates. Again, trying to do those, trying to align our cravings and our wants for carbohydrates with days where our body won't be uh, inclined to store it as fat and is most likely or more likely to use the glucose positively, right? So if we do add any glucose back to our, our bodies, to our fuel tanks, it'll be on a day we train, right? So let's say Monday we train, we brought those glucose levels down, we put some back in potentially, right? Tuesday, a burn day, we didn't have any glucose or glycogen intake, right? Our bodies, depending on how lean we are, will still burn through some of the fuel that we have as our bodies do 24 seven, right? Back to Wednesday, now we're back to training again, okay? We train, get those levels even further down, lower and lower to the point to now we're on Thursday and hopefully we've done our work Monday and Wednesday. We've reduced carbohydrate intake definitely on Tuesday, hopefully on Monday and Wednesday to a degree and now we're on Thursday and that should be our best opportunity to burn fat, right? Because our glucose levels uh, and glycogen storage levels should be, should have been reduced over the week and now we're in a, in a position hopefully to burn fat. All right. So what does Thursday for me look like? All right. So for me, again, it's fat burning, right? Fat burning day. So I still wake up as I do every day and do the same morning routine for several hours, regardless of a, a building day where I'm trying to build muscle and work out or a burn day where I'm allowing my body to tap into fat stores. So on a Thursday morning, I will get up between five and seven, right? If I have no appointments to do individual training, it's 7 a.m. in time to get my kids up and ready for school, all right? If I have a session to go to, right, a, a training session to go to, I'll get up between five and 5.30, right? Five o'clock or so. And I'll do my same routine. I'll have my 20 to 24 ounces of water, Again, getting the body to flush out and get it moving, get things cranked up. If I have cold water, your body will be forced to regulate temperature and will begin some calorie burning, some metabolic effect immediately. So water immediately. I follow that up with my prove it ketones, my exogenous ketones. Again, giving my body immediate fuel, immediate energy, right? I, I'm at a point now where my body is producing ketones naturally. I fast often. I don't eat nearly as much carbohydrates as I used to, and I'm able to train as efficiently as ever. So all those parameters, right, allow me to be in a position where my body has no glucose or glycogen to draw upon more often, meaning it, it's forced to oxidize fat into ketone bodies for fuel. So my body produces ketones much more regularly than it did 6, 12, 18 months ago when I first started using this exogenous ketone supplement. But I still give my body ketones for a few reasons. To protect my muscle tissue, right? If I do happen to want to train on a day that I don't want to bring in more glycogen, there's no lapse in energy usage, right? The biggest hurdle to overcome when you're trying to do the low carb or no carb diet and trying to build lean muscle tissue is this time period by which your body runs out of glucose or glycogen fuel, but does not yet have enough ketone fuel that it produces from your body. So ketogenic dieting is great once you get to the point where your body is regularly producing ketones, and that could be three to seven days, right? Um, so in that period of time when your body is out of glycogen and glucose, or the gas fuel tank, and has not yet produced enough electric, right, using the car analogy, fuel, ketone fuel, your body has a time period where it has nothing to draw upon for fuel. 
And if you're trying to train your way to fit in those time periods, oftentimes your body will resort to using uh, amino acids that it would normally use to build muscle, to do all sorts of things your body needs to be done. Or in, in extreme cases, your body will use muscle for fuel, right? It will break down muscle tissue and use that for fuel. So those things scare me, right? I don't want to lose muscle tissue. So even though my body is producing more ketones than it certainly did six months ago or 12 months ago, uh, I still give my body this fuel source every morning of ketones. And studies show again that the more your body uses ketones for fuel, the less likely, likely you are to uh, be subject or vulnerable to all kind of uh, diseases and maladies and all kind of things that, that, that are ill. Right and not good for you. So, you know, not the least of which is obesity. So, 5 a.m. I have my water, and then I follow that up immediately with my ketone supplement, Keto OS. All right. So that takes me out again for an hour. It well, it will take me out for three or four hours. But as I I do every day, I make sure I have a bridge of fuel of energy. So about an hour and a half after I do that. I begin drinking my Bulletproof coffee on any day, right? On these days, on a Thursday that I have a class or a session to go to, it's a 5 a.m. water ketones um, drink. And then at 6.30 a.m., I'll start my Bulletproof coffee, okay? And I'll take that out to uh, noon, right? Now, it's harder for me to, especially if I'm home. So even if I, if I go out for a, a private session, um, I'll have to come back to my house earlier than I would on a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday when I have a 12 o'clock class and get back home at 2 or 3. So I'm busy on those days. I train on those days. I have BCAs on those days during my workout. So uh, I'm not as likely to be um, subject right, to habits and to uh, cues and to... Um, hunger, right, that I would have if I was home. So when I come home, I'm more vulnerable than I am on a workout day. So I try to get to 12 o'clock with my Bulletproof coffee. Sometimes I'll make a second cup, right, which I can't do when I'm not here. So if I'm home, either because I had no sessions that day or I came home early after a session um, and I don't want to have carbohydrates or be vulnerable or susceptible to having something in the refrigerator or the cabinets that's not going to be beneficial to my body composition, at that point, I'll double up sometimes and have a second cup of coffee or more coffee uh, with the fat induced in it, right? Bulletproof coffee will give me fat fuel that my body can use uh, pretty immediately and it will stave off any hunger or cravings for bread, cereal, noodles, whatever I might want to eat at that time. All right, so from 6.30 a.m. to about 12 noon, at least, I can, get, I can use my Bulletproof coffee to get me through that bridge, right? So now I'm at a point where I've gone uh, typically 14 hours at this point. So my last meal, I always say 10 o'clock, uh, but it's usually my last nutrient or food intake is between 9 and 10 on most days. So I use 10 as my counter starting point almost every day so from 10 to noon is 14 hours right so we're trying to get to 16 to 18 14 is minimum so if i can get to 14 that's minimum now we're at 12 and on thursdays that or, or tuesday and thursdays when i'm home that's when i'm most vulnerable to breaking that 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 time period that fasting period earlier than i want Okay, so I'm at 14. If I go 6.30 a.m. to 12, I'm at 14 hours, right? So at this point, depending on where I'm at in terms of hunger, depending on where I'm at in terms of cravings, I will either make more coffee, as I said, or I will give in to this and have just protein and fat, salami, eggs, um, bologna, uh, things of that nature, nuts, right? Things that, that, that are fat and, and or protein, uh, protein shake, 
uh, for example. Something to bridge and get me through this window, right? So I can go longer without having any carbohydrate intake, right? You don't wanna, you don't wanna get to a point, guys, where you're starving, right? You're trying to create this strategy that you can sustain forever, not just for 30 days or until you get to some, some notch on the belt or some weight goal. You're trying to create an environment that you can do and sustain forever, okay? So for me, I don't ever wanna to get to where I'm starving, right? I do wanna make sure I'm not hungry for a reason other than physiological reasons, right? It's not that I'm just stressed or upset or I saw a commercial or I passed by the refrigerator and wanted something, or I'm trying to be, um, I'm trying to you know, waste time uh, to avoid some project or something. Uh, so make sure that, that when, you, when you do feel hungry, that you are indeed hungry. Sometimes I'll have water, lots of water, to kind of get me to the point where I can decide, am I hungry or am I just thinking about food or am I thirsty? So there's some tricks you can do, water, um, obviously it's good and then if you still are hungry then you have protein uh, and fat right with you know trying to avoid especially on a burn day trying to avoid any additional carbohydrate intake all right so that's at 12 if if I have to do it if not I'll try to go to one or two if I can with additional bulletproof coffee with water uh, things like that to get me to that point okay all right, so once we've done that, now usually I have a window between 12 and 2, around that time frame, and my dinner, right, to get to. Again, I don't think in terms really of meals, of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I think in terms of fueling, right, and I think in terms of, of just eating, right. This is a fuel uh, meal, right. I don't say meal, but this is, this is a fueling opportunity, Right? I'm pulling over at the side of the road to get gas to go to my next stop. All right, So now, whether it's 12 o'clock or whether it's 1 or 2, I still have to get through until 9.30 or so when I have dinner. Usually, I have to go out for something. right? Either I'm training a, a team or my son or daughter has practice. Uh, I'll be somewhere, typically, for a few hours in that window that's not here at my home. Okay, so what I need to do, what I do is make sure that within that uh, six to seven hour window, I fuel myself either with something that would take me out several hours and be a slower ingesting uh, item, like a protein shake or nuts that I can just snack on for a few hours, or I'll have something at about three o'clock, right? Something that's gonna gonna make me um, less hungry uh, at dinner time because that that's a long a big window two you know twelve one or two all the way up to nine o'clock nine thirty around that time frame is a big window of time to just hope that you make it through okay so I'll have uh, either more bulletproof coffee or a protein uh, meal or feeding at about 12 if I have to. And then sometime between that, usually about three o'clock, between three and five, I will refuel, right, with fat and protein again. So at this point, I'll have nuts, I'll have a protein shake, I'll have some eggs, I'll have um, some type of, of, of greens, right, a salad, uh, something like that. Something that's gonna get me satiated and fueled Right? You're trying to make sure your body doesn't go into this catabolic uh, environment where it feels like it has to rob metabolism from your, or rob uh, nutrients and fuel from amino acids or from your muscles and or uh, create a lower metabolic environment where it's using less fuel, i.e. reducing your metabolism. So you want to give it fuel. You just don't want to give it glucose or, or, or sugar or carbs. All right? So... Don't go out, you know, after, if, you, if you're working at somewhere, you know, don't eat lunch at 12 and then expect to get to 7 or 8 without having any fuel, right? Plan ahead because if you don't, you're going to have chips from the vending machine. You're going to have 
Starbucks on the way home. You're gonna get home and have junk food until dinner's done. So prepare yourself to be, to have something along that window, right? To satiate you, to keep you uh, from going to carbohydrates as a crutch, right? As a bridge. So make sure you have things like nuts, like beef jerky, like hard boiled eggs, like peanut butter and celery sticks. You know, things like that, that are again, you know, lower in carbohydrates, if any, higher in protein and higher in fat, right? So I'll have, you know, something like that around three o'clock, between three and five. And then that takes me all the way out to dinner, all right? So 5 a.m. water and ketones, 6.30 a.m. bulletproof coffee, I take that out to about noon at least, right? If I'm trying to go longer and I'm okay with it, I'm not super hungry yet, I'll double up on my on my bulletproof coffee or just relax and have water for an hour or so. If I'm at a point where I'm like, man, I'm hungry, rather than fight it, I'll have some protein and or fat. Eggs, eggs and sausage, eggs and bologna, eggs and hot links, egg, whatever, right? Some protein and fat, okay? Or protein shake. And if not, and or if I do that, I'll still, either way, at about three o'clock, between three and five, I'll have more protein and fat, right? Similar um, guidelines, right? Eggs, um, uh, nuts, protein shakes, um, leafy vegetables, things like that to get me through that window, right? So that I'm not in a position to eat whatever I want, okay? And then I'm gonna get all the way out to about eight, between eight and 9.30 is when I have my dinner. Okay, and then at that point, we have one of two options, right, guys? We can either continue this no carb, low carb uh, intake to continue to allow, allow our body to tap into fat stores, right? We're trying to give our body every opportunity to oxidize fat for fuel. However, for many people who train in the morning, this presents a problem because you need fuel for the workout. And if you get up early and go work out, it's hard to give your body enough glucose to have fuel to get a great workout. And I, as I said before, the most important asset we have in this fight against um, body fat is lean muscle. So when we have a workout, we have to make sure it's a good workout. And to do that, we need fuel. So you can do one of two things at dinner time. You can either continue this carbohydrate fast, if you will, or knowing that you need fuel for the workout and don't have enough time before you work out in the morning to properly give your body enough fuel for the workout, you can end, at least partially end, this quasi-fast Right to make sure your body has in its system enough fuel for the workout. So you might want to, again, go light, but have some whole grain bread or some brown rice, um, things that are going to be on the healthier side, right? the lower glycemic index side, meaning your body won't have the huge insulin spike and then get rid of the uh, glucose from your bloodstream. You want it to still be there when you work out. So things that are lower... Um, on the glycemic range, right? Healthier versions of carbohydrates, whole grains, brown versus white, those things will not elicit the same insulin response that makes your body get rid of the blood sugar, right? You want that in your body in the morning. So whole grain products, bread, uh, brown rice, things like that are gonna help you in the morning's workout without making your body go into this negative reaction. So you can do one of those two things, either continue fasting, let your body um, burn, right, more fat, or you can prepare for the next day, effectively ending your quasi-fast that you've been going through that day. I can do either, right, because I, ha I use ketones, so I don't need for my body to have anything in it to work out the next day, right? I can wake up and drink the fuel that I need. Again, your body can use either glucose or ketones to do what it has to do, right? It prefers the easy one, that's glucose. It runs better on ketones, right? Without the additional opportunity 
a risk of fat storage. So I can not have any carbs for days, wake up in the morning and drink my ketones and get a great workout, right? If you're not doing ketones, then you might need to, to revisit that and fuel your body either before the workout, but if you go early in the morning, it's hard to do that, or the night before, right? In essence, effectively cutting off the opportunity your body has to burn fat throughout the night, right? So uh, for that reason alone, you know, it's, it's, it's at least uh, suggested to look into ketones to help you through those kinds of periods uh, where you're trying to maximize your workout and, and maximize the windows in which your body's burning body fat, all right? So uh, as I've said several times, I don't eat any glucose, any fuel, any food really, really before two or three almost any day. And those are, and I work out before two or three every day. So I work out um, every time with no food in my stomach, right? Using only ketones uh, for my fuel. But anyhow, so that's my recap, guys. I hope that was, was helpful. I'll go through it again. So 5 a.m., water and ketones. 6.30 to about noon, bulletproof coffee. Right? If I have to, at 12, I'll give in to, my, to, to any cues or hunger I have and have a protein uh, and fat uh, feeding. Right, That's going to be eggs. That's going to be uh, bacon, sausage, nuts, protein shake. Uh, leafy vegetables, things like that, okay? Otherwise, I'll, tr I'll, I'll try to go longer, right? That's 14 hours. I'll try to go longer to 15 or 16 with just water or additional bulletproof coffee, right? At 3 o'clock, again, trying to cut this window in half between 12, 1 or 2, and 7 is too long. So within that window, I'll make sure I'm able to refuel, again, with fat and protein. Same kind of things, nuts, protein powders, uh, protein drinks, uh, beef jerky, turkey jerky, eggs, things like that uh, to get me through this window. And then at dinner time, again, uh, at about eight or nine, between eight and nine thirty for me, uh, that's when I have one of two choices, either end my quasi fast and prepare for the workout the next day, have some healthier, uh, lower glycemic carbs and or continue my fasting by having only fat and protein at that point. All right, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, I gotta crank these out, so I gotta get right to Friday's uh, schedule immediately. So if you have any questions, as always, please feel free to ping me, to post comments, um, and I'll be more than happy to help you figure out what the best schedule is for you that's gonna be sustainable and um, ultimately successful. All right, guys, love you. Uh, talk to you guys soon, bye-bye.